Vlorik adjusted the magnification on his observation drone, its silent hover mere inches from a bustling city street. Below, the bipedal beings he'd come to call humans teemed like a multicolored, fleshy river. Fascinating, Vlorik murmured to his recorder, his six chitinous legs keeping him steady on the rocky outcrop. Their exoskeletons, or rather lack thereof, is a curious adaptation. So reliant on a flimsy, carbon-based structure. Humans, Vlorik had learned, were a dichotomy wrapped in a paradox. Their physical forms were fragile, easily injured, their lifespans fleeting compared to his own kind. Yet, their minds, their minds were a whirlwind of contradictions. He watched, captivated, as a young human chased a brightly colored inflatable sphere down the street, shrieking with laughter. Beside him, another human, older, with lines etched into their face, stopped and ruffled the younger one's hair, a gesture of affection. They seemed to crave both solitude and connection, Vlorik mused. One moment they formed these tight-knit groups, families they call them, filled with complex social rituals. The next, they retreat into solitary pursuits, lost in thought or staring at glowing rectangles. The glowing rectangles were a source of endless fascination. They contained a vast, intangible world the humans called the Internet, a network that connected them across vast distances. Vlorik had infiltrated it, a silent observer in a digital ocean of information and entertainment. Their capacity for creativity is astounding, he continued, watching a street performer juggle flaming batons. They create elaborate stories, paint their world in vibrant colors, and build towering structures that pierce the very clouds. But their creativity wasn't always used for beauty. Vlorik had seen the dark side too, the wars they waged on each other, the destruction they wreaked on their own planet. They are a species of extremes, Vlorik concluded, a hint of sadness in his voice. Capable of immense love and compassion, but also of terrible violence. Their potential for both good and evil hangs heavy in the air. He paused, his multifaceted eyes reflecting the setting sun. Despite their flaws, Vlorik couldn't help but admire humanity. They were a testament to the universe's endless capacity for surprise, a species clinging to a fragile blue world, forever reaching for the stars. Perhaps, Vlorik whispered, a hopeful note creeping into his voice, one day they will reach them. Vlorik's observation post was disrupted by a frantic chirp from his communicator. It was Zylo, his superior back on Bilatron. Vlorik, report. The Council has reviewed your findings. They're concerned. Humanity's aggressive tendencies pose a threat to galactic stability. Vlorik felt a pang of irritation. The Council always saw threats. He argued back, his voice steady despite the tremor in his chitinous claws. They're complex, yes, but not inherently malicious. Their capacity for cooperation is remarkable. Look at their advancements in space travel. Their weapons advancements too, Zylo countered. They're close to developing technology exceeding galactic regulations. Frustration bubbled within Vlorik. They're still children, Zylo, taking their first wobbly steps into the cosmos. Can't we offer guidance, not punishment? Silence crackled over the line. Finally, Zylo spoke, his voice softer. The Council is considering an intervention. A quarantine, perhaps, to prevent them from becoming a danger. Vlorik knew what that meant. Imprisonment. Fear for the future of humanity clawed at him. He had to act. Wait! Vlorik exclaimed, an idea forming in his mind. There's another way. Let me propose a solution. Intrigue replaced the tension in Zylo's voice. What do you have in mind? Vlorik took a deep breath. An exchange program. We share knowledge, technology, but most importantly, our experiences. Let them see the consequences of unchecked aggression, the beauty of peaceful cooperation. A long moment passed. Then, Zylo replied, a hint of hope in his voice. Interesting. Present this proposal to the Council. We'll see if they agree. Vlorik deactivated the communicator, a sliver of optimism pushing through his worry. He looked back down at the city, the tiny humans buzzing with life. 
he had a story to tell, a story that might change their fate. The fate of humanity, and perhaps, the fate of the galaxy, rested on his next transmission.